Hello everyone, my name is Kush and welcome back to my hobby blog. Today I'm going to be doing a non-spoiler review of Joe Abercrombie's book, The Blade Itself. This is the edition that I have. It's almost exactly 600 pages, maybe 500 pages. 501 pages. And this is a really solid uh, fantasy book. Uh, I finished it yesterday or two days ago and... My main takeaway from this is that the characters are the best thing about this book. I loved all of the characters for the most part. I think they're all really well uh, constructed. They're all really interesting. Uh, Glockta, who is the Inquisitor, uh, torturer guy, he, uh, I think, is my favorite character in this book. He is such an interesting guy. His... Uh, his and a monologue is really, really funny at times. Uh, he just sort of has that type of uh, nihilist uh, streak going through him. And we also have Jezel, who is a uh, up-and-coming like gladiator who wants to sort of prove himself because his dad is a noble. And he wants to do something uh, that he will actually be happy with. So he's going back and forth with this fencing thing. And we kind of see his uh, arc sort of go back and forth between wanting to be a gladiator and not. And we also have a third character, Logan Nine Fingers, or the Bloody Nine, uh, I think he uh, they call him. But he, I really wanted more from. Uh, this was a character who has a lot of potential in my opinion, but we don't really see anything with him, uh, this book. And the story itself, uh, I feel like is very lacking, in my opinion. Uh, I thought the pacing of this was just really slow. It wasn't until the halfway point that I actually became more invested into the story and the characters. And honestly, if it wasn't for the characters, I don't think I would have gotten to the halfway point because just the actual storyline uh and i want to make reference to a quote on the back because this something because this quote was the reason why i bought this book and it says and this is from the wall street journal it says lord of the rings as directed by kurosawa and for those who don't know who kurosawa is we are talking about akira kurosawa who was a Japanese uh, director uh, who made his first film in the late 30s, I want to say, maybe early 40s. And he made movies all the way until the 90s. And he is my favorite director of all time. Uh, he's done Seven Samurai. He has done uh, Throne of Blood. He's done Redbeard, which is a very underrated one, in my opinion. He's done The Hidden Fortress, which is what Star Wars was based off of. Uh, Yoshimbo, which is what, uh, gosh, the, um, gosh, what's, what's that movie called? Oh, Fistful of Dollars. Like, that movie was copying right from Yoshimbo. Used the same script, actually. And they did not credit the original script writer, but uh, Sergio Leone and Akira Kurosawa actually were big fans of each other. So they were able to rectify that issue quickly. But all that to say, uh, I'm a big Kurosawa fan. Obviously, Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite uh, books of all time. And also, the movies are some of my favorite uh, ever. And so when I read this quote on the back saying, Lord of the Rings as directed by Kurosawa, I was so ready for that. It has nothing to do with either of them. <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, I think using both of those names was a heavy disservice to the novel because it's a lot more like Gladiator meets, uh, God, what was the comparison I had? It was like Gladiator meets, um, oh my gosh, um, I, I can't remember, but there was a uh, comparison I made where this book was more like gladiator mixed with popular you know bloody sci-fi or fantasy book and this book is considered grimdark this is something i want to mention as well is that this is part of the grimdark genre 
And I said this during my TBR video, but dang, but now that I'm on my review and I'm done with it, I don't know what this grimdark genre is. This read just like any other fantasy book to me. Uh, sure, it was more nihilist or just uh, had shittier characters overall. I mean, everyone does some pretty heinous stuff throughout this book. Uh, I don't think there's any difference uh, between this and this subgenre and any other fantasy genre. I would say this is definitely adult fantasy. I would not give like, 12-year-old me, this book. Well, maybe I would, knowing who I was when I was 12. But any 12-year-old, I would not give them this book. Uh, this book was a lot bloodier than a lot of fantasy. But that's about it. Um, people said shit, fuck, and all, cunt a lot of times. But so do a lot of other books. <laughs> that's really the only thing that I think separates this book with what people, uh, oh, I guess that's sort of what people imagine Grimdark to be. I don't think that's a good name for a genre. I think this is just adult fantasy. But, uh, maybe as I read more Grimdark, I'll start to understand what that genre means more. But so far, I don't really care for that label. So, I think this is just adult fantasy. And... I'm trying to think. The world building also in this book is really well done. I enjoyed all of the talk between the various uh, creatures that were made uh, through magic. It reminded me of Wheel of Time with Agenor and the Shadow Spawn. I really enjoyed that. Um, this world also feels pretty big, also, uh, which is something I wasn't expecting because this is a early novel by this uh, author, Joe Abercrombie. So I was a little worried about, because um, George R. R. Martin has a uh, quote on the cover of this. So I was having uh, Song of Ice and Fire vibes a little bit. And this book, just as much as George R. R. Martin feels as if uh, distance is a thing in this world. Uh, everyone's not just, like, appearing in the next chapter. Like, we do have travel logs as well, which is something that George R. R. Martin enjoys doing a lot for some reason. But, um, <laughs> I, I enjoyed it in this book. And in terms of my final rating, I know I've just kind of been rambling, but I really don't have... I, I don't really have any, like, strong feelings about this book, but... My rating, I think, is a 7 out of 10. I thought it was good. I think it's just above average. It kept my interest from beginning to end with the characters. Everyone was great. Uh, Nine Fingers, Glockda, Jezel, uh, Audie was fun. Uh, I liked her. Uh, Pharaoh. She's like a, uh, like a thief character. She's really fun, but... As I said earlier, it was only about halfway through this book that I actually started to get invested. And that was when everything sort of started clicking together for me. And I was able to finish it in a few days. But yeah, this book is a just solid 7 out of 10 for me. I don't feel strongly at all about this book. I'm very uh, interested in what happens next. I think the ending was good enough to where I'm interested in what goes on. After this book, uh, I do already have book two on the shelf. I've had it for like two years now. But once I finish that one, I'll see if I'm still interested in a book three. Because I've heard uh, this series is one of the best. Uh, really fun. Really well done. Everything else. But um, yeah, that's about all I have today. I don't really know anything else to say. But this was a solid book. I enjoyed it. Um... The next books that I'm reading right now is going to be uh, The Golden Fool, uh, Tawny Man Book 2. I've already started that. I'm about 50 pages in. I started today uh, during lunch at work. But um, after that, I have Mahabharat and then it's Sunlit Man. And then hopefully I'll be done with all three of those. And then I can do one more novel just for fun uh, before I... Dragonsteel which I still need to do a dedicated video for, so I'll probably shoot that soon. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and please have a great rest of the day.